Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 71773, Kai's Golden Dragon Raider from the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 624 pieces, 7 minifigures, and more retail for $89.99 in the US. This set does not come out until June 1st, 2022 in most parts of the world, and August 1st, 2022 in North America, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Master Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of all 9 of the Summer 2022 LEGO Ninjago sets, as well as early reviews of the Summer 2022 LEGO Minecraft sets, and lots of other very exciting stuff down the line. Only about 16% of my audience is actually subscribed to the channel, so if those kinds of videos sound interesting to you, by liking the video and subscribing it'll help you see them as soon as they're posted, and will also really help support me and the channel. But with all that being said, let's get on to the review. So here is the main build of Kai's Golden Dragon Raider, and this is a really interesting looking build. It's a very unique design for a vehicle and one that I've never seen in Ninjago before, which is a good thing because we've gotten many, many vehicles in Ninjago before, and after 11 years they all tend to look quite samey, so seeing something so unique is a great thing to see. You have these two sections in the front with these somewhat small wheels, lots of bits of gold detailing all over, you have some sticker pieces right here. It does feel very mechanical, but it doesn't feel incomplete, which is a good thing. And that all comes back into a rigid technic joint, which we'll take a look at what that does in a little bit. But you can see it's overall the same design on both sides, and even both sides of each individual wheel are symmetrical. Then we arrive at the main cockpit of the vehicle. Again, lots of different pieces used for texturing this red armored piece originated in Master of the Mountain. You have the gold blades from Seabound. You have this sticker piece right here which has this new symbol which is on every golden ninja this wave. Then you can see it's got the same sticker on the other side too. The actual windshield's in trans orange and it's got stickers on every surface. You can see this one has gold armor and some fire. Up at the top you have some writing but I'm not sure what that says. I'm not sure if that's something in the Ninjago language or it's just miscellaneous symbols. And then there's very similar gold armor and fire on the other side. This entire cockpit section can be opened up though. It's not just the windshield that hinges open, it's this huge section and I really love that. It just feels very smooth. It gives me like a Batman vibe if that makes any sense. But anyway, yeah, with that open you can see the interior and there's actually two seats. That's very cool to see because it's rare we get two seats in a Ninjago vehicle. But yeah, you could fit both Kai and Skylar in here or any other two figures you want. But those are the two figures that come in this set. In here you can see there's some stickered pieces of buttons. These I assume are to control the vehicle. And then there's a stickered piece in the front bit which is obviously flipped up right now. But you can see it looks like it's a targeting computer. You have an image of Mr. E right there as well as the two cannons on the car on the side. Here's how Kai and Skylar actually fit into the vehicle, and they actually fit in with their armor pieces, which is really nice. And then of course you can close the windshield back up around them, and there they are driving it with it all closed up. Skylar's face gets a bit hidden, but you can still see Kai's pretty well. And overall I just love that there's more than one seat here. Now moving back, you can see there's more of these Mask the Mountain armor pieces. These have stickers with gold armor on them. A few more stickered parts on Exonite shields back there. Again, there's that symbol that's on all the Golden Ninja. And then you have this section with these two gold blades and this like straw hat right here. And this actually flips up in a really smooth motion and reveals a detachable drone. I do believe this is a drone, not a flyer, because I don't believe there's any way for a minifigure to attach onto it. Maybe they could grab onto the bars at the back, but yeah, I feel like that wouldn't be convenient. And yeah, I mean, it's a very simple drone design, but it's a fun thing to have, and it's nice for like kids to be able to take this off and play with it. So I appreciate that being here. But when you're done with that, you can clip that back in right here, and then close this entire section back up around it. And I'd say it's hidden pretty well. And then finally, the very back of this vehicle is a little bit lacking, I must admit. It's very blocky, lots of open space. You can see exposed Technic on the inside right here, but at the very least it's not on the outside. But at least the wheels that are connected to this section look good. And while the Technic is visible, it's decently well hidden. There's also room back here to hold two swords or any other accessory that you want to store back here. I always appreciate when sets include ways to store the accessories, so that's very nice to see that here. But now we come to these large blades on the side, which are part of a transformation feature in this set. You can see there's this cone built in the back, it's easier to access if you have the entire drone area moved up and the drone removed. But if you take this black cone build and spin it, that'll move these blades on the back forward and put them more into attack position. Because you see these blades look very decorative when they're back here, but when they're like this they look more like cannons. But wait, that's not all with the transformation. This entire back section with the big wheels could be hinged down to make the entire back side of this build even taller, but that actually isn't even all for the transformation. You can't just have it like this and have it roll around in attack mode, but let's say the enemy's right in front of you and you just want to stop the vehicle and shoot up at it. Well then we come back to the rigid technic joints I talked about before. You can see these wheels at the very front can be moved out, and while it may look a little silly, when the vehicle's like this it's pretty much locked in place, because the wheel's going outward so it can't move forward. 
And because of this, you can imagine this is like studying the cannon to shoot at the enemy. Speaking of, now let's take a look at this cannon stuff a little bit closer. You can see they use these large blade pieces. These are all new for this wave and they come in a few different colors and a few different sets. In this set, they're dual molded in gold and trans orange and they fit the whole like fiery Kai aesthetic really well. And then there's also orange spring load shooters in here, which to fire them, you just push down the very back right here and there they go. And then you can see you just have this red circular piece with a straw hat in the middle. So no matter how you rotate it, that looks the same. Speaking of that rotation, you can see that cone piece in the back is much easier to access now in this transformed version. And you can move the cannons by turning that, or you can just move them manually, both work. I think this is a super fun transformation feature and makes this one of my favorite sets of the wave. The back being so sparse makes a lot more sense when you consider it's meant to do this. And I think it's really cool how like distinctly different each form of this vehicle looks. But I think that's about all I have to say on Kai's Golden Dragon Raider for now. So now let's move on to the minifigures and then my overall thoughts. So here is the first minifigure in the set, we have Golden Dragon Zane, and wow, this minifigure is just beautiful and spectacular overall. Zane is personally my favorite ninja, so I may be a little bit biased, but I think this is the best looking of the Golden Dragon figures, and all four of them look amazing, and also just one of the best Ninjago minifigures of all time. The trans light blue used in the arms and legs really gives Zane that whole icy look. It actually feels like he's made out of ice here, and combined with the wings and everything, I just think this figure looks spectacular. He's got like this dragon face ninja mask which is dual molded in that translate blue and I have mixed feelings on it. On the one hand the idea of the dragon face is really cool but on the other hand I wish they leaned a little more heavily into the whole elemental aspect. I feel like the gold almost distracts from it. It would have been cooler if it was just entirely translate blue. That's not a huge deal though and you can easily take that mask off. But let me tell you this figure still does look amazing without the mask. Because taking this off, yeah look at that. This is an all new face for Zane, and wow look how cool that looks. I love that printing, I love that design. Kai and Jay reused their faces from the core spinners, but Zane didn't have a core spinner so this is our first time getting this face, and it is such an incredible design. This is easily our best like elemental burst Zane we've ever gotten. It's just such a cool look and I'm in love with just how that transparent part looks. The golden armor design on the torso is pretty cool too and I love how it has just like ice shards bursting out of it. And then it's got this golden armor attachment which the wings are attached to. This is very similar to the armor that the Shintarans wear in Master of the Mountain. So I'm curious if in the show they actually get this armor from Shintaro. And then my one complaint with this figure is the Technic pins around the back. It's not a huge deal in Zane because Zane does use blue, so the blue does blend in a little bit better here, but it's especially bad on Kai and Cole, which we'll see in my reviews of those. But yeah, it's not atrocious here, so I wish they found a way to attach these wings with a color that looked a little nicer. Not a huge deal, and from the front you never really notice, but it is something that does detract from this figure ever so slightly. Removing the armor, even just this is such a cool figure, and I feel like just had a hairpiece of this and this is just a great Zane. I think this is the first like elemental Zane that actually beats NRG, which is very exciting to see, because NRG has been the best one for 10 years, and it's kind of sad that they've not managed to top that, but no, I think they finally have here. The transparent parts look amazing. Fits Zane really well and just makes for a super cool looking Lego minifigure. Turning him around, wow, this is actually my first time looking at this back torso print, and that looks sick. So you have the letter Z written in the Ninjago language right there, but it's really jagged and ice like and you have these shards coming every direction. That looks incredible. It looks like cracked ice. That is so cool. Yeah, just such an amazing figure overall. I'm in love with this one. Nothing but good things to say. Here are the next two main figures in the set. We have Golden Kai and Skylar. Golden Kai is a fairly nice looking figure overall. He's got like this armored golden design, but you can see he's got a normal ninja suit underneath that. And you can see the gold continues into his arm and on his actual armor piece and even into his hood. The hood is the same part that was on the 2021 Golden Ninja, like 10th anniversary Golden Kai. But the only difference is there's now printing on the front of it. And that printing is an all new symbol that is shared between all four Golden Ninja this wave. I checked the Ninjago alphabet and it's kind of similar to the Ninjago letter for R, but it's not a perfect match. So if anybody else knows what that symbol might mean, let me know in the comments. But yeah, it's very interesting that that's there. And it's very interesting that they all share the same one. That aside though, I think this figure looks good. It's not the best looking Golden Ninja, but it's not the worst either. And there's a lot to be liked. I especially like how metallic a lot of the printing is. And turning him around 360 degrees, yeah, the overall design looks pretty good. Removing his mask and armor, there you can see his face print as well as his full torso print. Nothing new in terms of the face. And then taking a look at the back torso and alternate face print, you can see the back torso print has Kai's more standard symbol that we've been seeing since 2019. That's just the letter K written in the Ninjago language, as well as more of that golden armor. Yeah, fairly solid figure all around. But then this new Skylar, wow, what a spectacular minifigure. So cool to see Skylar's coming in sets again. And I'm surprised we have so many variants of this character at this point. But yeah, it makes me very happy to see. All new face print on her too. You do get her hair piece here, which I believe has only come in two sets before, so very cool to see that. All new face print here as well. 
This, in my opinion, is one of our worst Skylar face prints, but it's still cool to get an alternative because the other previous ones were very good, so you could very easily swap it out. And there is a really good alternate face here, which we'll see in a moment. The torso print's very nice. It reminds me a lot of her Skybound torso design, though with some slight differences. The suit seems very designed for utility, with like belts and pouches and whatnot. And wow, actually, she has that golden ninja symbol too, right? That's the same symbol as on Kai's mask. And then turning her around so you can see her alternate face, you can see she's got an angry expression and then she has these white face markings, very similar to Island Lloyd, and that's such a cool new variant. Very excited to see that in the show, hopefully, but even if it doesn't appear, that's such a cool face print for her. Skylar's armor piece is also the ZX armor, surprised to see that stone production, but it works well for her. And removing that, you can see her back torso print where she's got like this rope going around her back. It looks very like ragged and beat up. She seems like she's very much in survival mode. Very excited to see like what comes of this and what the context of this figure is. My only complaint with this one is no leg printing. It would have been nice, but we have gotten leg printing for her in the past, which I feel like you'd very easily swap out, but still pretty disappointing that she didn't come with it here. And then the next two figures in the set, we have a Vengestone Brute and a Vengestone Warrior. Not going to spend too long on these guys because they do come in every single set this wave. And I'm not sure the order of these reviews are going up, and I'm sure you guys have seen me review them before. But in case you haven't seen my other reviews, in short, I really like these guys. The use of the transparent parts is super cool. And their head molds are really interesting. They're like a mixture of a dragon and a wolf. And they've got these large pink crystals coming out. And I think that's just such a cool design. They're super detailed minifigures, especially just for generic grunt villains. And I'm very happy to see we get so many in sets. It's also very cool to see there is two variants. They're identical except for their torso prints, as well as the brute having two trans pink arms, while the warrior only has one trans pink arm. But yeah, I love like the crystal design going up their torsos and like the little bits of gold cracking through. And you can see the brutes have the overlord symbol right there. Turning these guys around, you can see the back torso prints, which has more of that same crystalline design. And then in terms of their accessories, they both use this new crystal blade piece. On the brute, it sort of makes up a sword, while on the warrior, it's more built into a spear. Yeah, both these guys very cool. Nothing all too special in the grand scheme of this wave, but still very cool to see here. And then here are the final two figures in the set. We have one more Vengestone Warrior, which is exactly identical to the one I already talked about, so I'm not going to talk about him again. And then we have Mr. F. Not Mr. E, this is Mr. F. Why is he Mr. F instead of Mr. E? I'm not sure. We'll have to see when the show comes out. But yeah, that name change is interesting. Gonna we'll start with the accessories again. The Warrior comes with the Vengestone Spear, just like the other one, not much to say. But then Mr. F comes with the crystallized version of the Shuriken's Vice. If you haven't seen this new crystallized golden weapon piece yet, I'll show you how it works. So you have this big trans pink crystal blade right here and it's got bars on the side as well as a place to insert a bar in the middle. So if the enemies get their hands in the golden weapons you can attach them into this crystallized bar. So for example in this set you're supposed to attach the shurikens of ice to the side and that creates like the corrupted crystallized version of them. I feel like that's not the best way to do the shurikens of ice. The other weapons work a lot better with this like crystalline blade but I think it's an okay way to do it and it's a way to do it without creating too many new parts. But yeah there's also a look at the new shurikens of ice piece. In my opinion I think the old ones were marginally better but this is still a nice alternative option, and there are some benefits of this one over the old one, such as the more detailed, like, actual blade bits. The set also does come with every other one of the other golden weapons. They come in a separate bag, like you see here, and every single set this wave comes with this. So it comes with two of every single weapon, except for the nunchucks, and only comes with one set of nunchucks. But you get two sides, two swords of fire, four shurikens of ice, and then two handles for the nunchucks of lightning to make one total weapon. I'm not going to go over all the weapons in this video, because I feel like it would be redundant to do that in eight separate videos, but go check out my review of the gold golden dragon or the temple of the crystal king if you want to see me review all of them. Back to Mr. F though, he uses the same torso design that the rest of the Vengestone generals use, but it is really good looking. It's got the overlord symbol in the middle, and it's got a very purple aesthetic to it. And then he's got this crystallized armor piece, which is such a cool new part. It's of course in trans pink, as you'd expect, matching the crystal of everything else in this wave, but it really adds to the entire vibe that Mr. F is being powered by Vengestone. He also ditches the biker helmet here in favor of this new samurai helmet. The samurai helmet's used for the Oni mask in this wave, but it's also used for Mr. F here, and I kind of wish they stuck with the biker helmet for him, because the visor with the samurai helmet looks a little bit odd, but I don't think it's a huge deal and still works well enough, and it's very easy to customize if you want to put the biker helmet back on him. I'm curious if he's going to use the biker helmet or the samurai helmet in the show. And then if we flip the visor up, you can see the face print underneath, and this is very very similar to the old Mr. E face print, the only difference is now the eyes are purple instead of red. And then finally, there's a full look of the torso with the armor removed, and there's the back torso print as well as lack of any alternate face. Of course I always liked the alternate faces, but I really don't know what it would be here, so none is fine. Yeah, Mr. F is probably my least favorite figure of all the Vengestone Generals, but it's still very cool to see him return, and the design is still pretty good overall. So what are my overall thoughts on this set? 
I like this in a lot, I was surprised, but this is actually one of my favorite sets of this wave. There is one major thing holding this set back though, and if you've seen my other reviews, you probably know what I'm going to say. That's the price of this thing. Every set this wave is really expensive, but in my opinion, this is the worst price set this wave. This set costs $90 in the US, and I assume similar translations in other countries, and there is no world where it should cost this much. We've gotten $30 Ninjago sets with similar piece counts. The physical size of this thing is big, but it's about $60 big, not $90 big. You get a good number of figures in the set, and things like the Golden Dragon Zane are really good and help up that price a little bit, so I can understand charging $60, maybe even $70 for this, especially with supply chain issues and whatnot going on right now, but $90 is just way, way too much money. And while you do get good figures here, I feel like it's not enough to justify paying that price. Which is a shame because the Zane figure is amazing and I really want everyone to get the Zane figure just because it's such a cool one to have. But honestly, no, I don't recommend you pay this price for this set. These $70 and $80 sets from the same wave are a lot better priced. Or you can save up an extra 30 and buy the mech for a much better value. So if money's not an issue for you, for sure get this set. I absolutely love it. Really fun play feature, really great figures. But if you are on a budget, yeah, this is not one you should get. Or if you are going to get it eventually, this should be one of the last ones you get. Hopefully it'll go on sale for 20% off at some point. Because for $72, that would be marginally better than this price. But anyway, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you enjoyed it, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Lots more early reviews like this one are coming very, very soon. So by liking and subscribing, you'll see them in your sub box as soon as they're posted. And it also really helps support me in the channel. But I think that's about all I have to say for this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.